Today, we'll be tying the Parachute Patriot. Hey everyone, Matt here with the Northern Angler. Today's fly is one of our favorite. If you haven't heard of it, you might be living under a rock because this thing is not only full of fun colors, it catches fish. And I love chasing brook trout in small streams. And this is one of the best flies you can have in your box. It's a parachute style pattern. So maybe not the best for the rough and tumble water if you have riffles or plunge pools, but for a lot of the R water here in Northern Michigan, this is perfect. It gives that fish a great body image, something they can really identify and pick out in that slower water, and it works. Let's go ahead and talk about the materials we'll be using today. I'm tying on a fire hole 419, but just about any standard or 1x long dry fly hook will work here. Sizes 12 to 16 are perfect. This is an attractor fly. You're not going to need much more than those core sizes. For the thread, Uni ADOT is great. I like a very light thread, if possible, to work the hackle off at the post. For the tails, we'll use that classic spade hackle. These are from feathers off the side of the neck and are nice and stiff. Your body material is Crystal Flash in saltwater blue, and the post is going to be EP fibers today, but you can substitute here as well. I'll be using two feathers off of a neck today to give it a very full buoyant parachute. As always, don't forget to check out that full material list down below in the description. Let's go ahead and place your hook securely in the vise. Always test it there. You don't want that flying out. And then we're going to mentally split this hook shank into thirds because I want to start my thread right at the one third back position. That's where my post is going to be. Work your thread back to the point here. You want to cut off any excess that just ensures, you know, your threads nice and secure in there. Now this is a barbless hook and typically the barb is your kind of your gauge for where to stop your thread and tie in your tail material. So instead we're just going to meet halfway between the point of the hook and the bend. And that's going to be our tie in point for our tails. You don't want to go too far back because then your tails are just gonna droop. And I'm gonna put a few wraps right on top of each other and I'm gonna create this little teeny tiny bump. That's gonna help splay the feathers out, the fibers we're using. And this is what we call a spade hackle. This is the ideal tailing material for this fly. You can substitute. This is on the very edges if you have a neck. And what I like to do here is pinch the tip between my thumb and index finger Usually I splay these out and try and work them down first, but I've used this one. We've tied a few flies. So thumb and index at the tip, and then I brace the rest of the feather with my middle finger against my thumb. And that gives me tension. See how those stick straight out? And I can actually grab a group and pull and see how nicely aligned all those fibers are. That's really important. All right, compress those down. They're never going to be perfect, perfect. And we're going to measure these against the shank. We're looking for about a shank length. I think going too long on this fly kind of looks weird. So pinch wrap, three wraps there. That looks just a little bit long. That's more like it. And we'll get a nice splayed out. See how those are nice and separated? That's what we want. Wrap forward over this. Do not trim the butts right away. I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. You can integrate that into your body taper and save yourself a little bit of thread wrapping. It's always nice. For our post material, we're going to use EP fibers. I use a bit more than most people. You know, I think a really skinny post is evident of someone that's a little bit newer to tying. I made that mistake for years and it's just, it's really frustrating when you're putting tension on your hackle and it just collapses. So more material than you think. 
put three, four wraps right on top of that. And before I do anything else, I want to check my position, make sure I'm happy with where that's at. I am. So three wraps in front, three wraps behind. And then I'm going to trim this to its even. Do not trim this down too far too soon because having that length really makes it a lot easier to work with. I'm going to bring my bobbin to vertical now. See that? I'm going to start wrapping, winding slowly up. And I'm grabbing this post with my left hand whenever it, the bobbin is not in the way. That allows me to add tension and cinch down on this. If you have really loose wraps for your post, again, it's going to collapse. You're not going to be very happy. And I'm not in a big hurry here. I'm just trying to take touching wraps. And I do not want to go too tall. I don't want to go too short, just about right. You know, another placeholder is no more than your gap here between the point of your hook. I like to go maybe a little bit less than that, but I like kind of a short stout hackle on my parachutes. Bring it back down. Make sure you got a little bit of a wedge in front and you can kind of tug on this and make sure it's not going anywhere. Perfect. Got one little errant fiber we'll get. Next we'll grab our body material. This is crystal flash. This is a twisted fiber. So you probably wouldn't think of it as a body material, but once you start wrapping it, it lays down just like tinsel. I'm going to lay this down right behind the post and I use this angled tie-in method. So it's on the near side of the shank. And as I use thread tension, it's going to wrap that right on top of the shank. So if you've ever had issues tying in a material and it goes to the far side, this is the way to remedy that. All right, just give it some tension with your off hand as you wind back to where we tied our tails in. Trim off your excess. Give your bobbin a spin if you got a second because flattening your thread out can be really helpful. We're using dot today because I like to use about as thin a thread as you can get away with. Now this is a size 12. You know, you can use a 10 aught if you want, you can use six aught, whatever you got, but the way we're going to tie this hackle off thinner thread pays off. Next, we're going to build a little bit of a taper here. So just like any fly, you're building a taper, you're going to wrap back and forth a whole bunch. I'm going to speed up my hand here. And then you're not going to want to go back as far each time. And that's going to help you build a little bit of a thread taper. This can be really subtle with this fly or almost non-existent since it's just an attractor, but I always think it looks nice. It just, we want to give them something chunky to eat, right? I mean, some of these mayflies are pretty big. Some are fairly delicate, but if we're building an attractor, it may as well be something with some calories for these fish. All right, and then I'm gonna bring my thread right back to about right at the point. And that's gonna be my first stopping point when I'm wrapping this tinsel. If you want, you can use a dab of super glue here. A little bit is a lot. This really helps get the tinsel started. That might even be too much. It just gives you a little bit extra grip as you're wrapping this. You can use the rotary function here. It's a little goofy behind the post though. So typically I just do this part by hand and I really pay attention to that very first wrap. From here, I'm just taking touching wraps and trying to overlap just a little bit. And once I get to my thread, I'm gonna tie it off, but do not trim this excess. <laughs> If you get into kind of that automatic mode, autopilot, you can definitely make the mistake of just trimming this off because that's what we do with most of our materials. But here I want to use this same piece again, and I'm just wrapping it up, working my way up the shank with this. Okay, that's good. Spin my bobbin one more time. This is kind of a theme. Check the other side. Good. We had some nice touching wraps. 
I have some tinsel exposed. You don't have to worry about that, but I always do. If I'm taking the time to tie it myself, we may as well tie it correctly. Then you can show these off to your friends and everybody can be impressed with how good they look. All right, I'm just taking touching wraps back to the tie off point and then same thing back and we're just covering up any excess and we're continuing to build that taper subtle as it is bring your thread right to the post now again you can add another dab of glue if you want I will just for for the sake of things here Try not to get any of that glue into your post material. You, you will regret it. All right. I usually bring this material to in front of the post where I can tie it off. Three or so wraps should do it. Come in, trim your excess. That looks pretty good. We're going to cover that little errant piece up with some thread wraps anyways. So the head of this fly is actually thread. So I'm going to lay down a quick thread base here because when I'm tying those hackles in, I really don't want them to slide around. Now I've picked two hackles off of my neck. You can see this one's been used a little bit, so I had to search a little bit for 12s. And if you don't have a hackle gauge, there's, I'm gonna show you a really cool trick, but if you gauge these out, they're perfect 12s. And if you haven't used a neck feather before, you can see there's a taper to it, okay? And we wanna use kind of the sweet spot. You don't wanna tie in where it's transitioning. You want really to use that consistent width section. Okay, you can take this Wrap it around your post, and if your hackle fibers are reaching just the base of the tail, that's the right size. I, I'm typically not a oversized hackle guy. Um, you know, I just like nice, dense, full hackles, though. I'm using two hackles today because the grade of this neck is a little bit lower, and the, the fiber density, the barb density, isn't quite what you'd find in a slightly higher grade neck. So I'm going to show you how to use two of these. I'm going to strip kind of those feathers down, kind of like what we did with the tail fibers there, until I get to that consistent width part of the feather. And it's going to feel like there's a bit of a waste, but when you see the results on your fly, it will be worth it. Trim those. Try and keep these stems together, and then we're going to preen these fibers down. I'm actually going to trim a good amount, about a shank length, because I'm actually gonna secure these right to the post as well. Now, if you had a higher density barb, you know, maybe you got a hundred pack from whiting or something higher than a pro grade or at least a pro grade neck, you can just use one and you can actually wrap up your parachute post and then back down. For here, we're just gonna do wraps down right to the, right to the hook. Okay, I'm going to take that same method I was using before where I'm bringing this in with an angle. One, two, three, and I'm wrapping towards the post. I'm going to do kind of a, a round wrap and I'm going to bring these up the post. Make sure you leave yourself enough space, otherwise you're going to have some Hackle fibers that just shoot straight up, and that happens. That's okay. Give it some X wraps, and here we covered up that that little piece of tinsel that was still there. Trim your stems about even with the end of the shank. That way you can use them in your taper building this up. You know it's not always easy with a dot to build a head up. I want to make sure there's not a big change a drop down in amount of thread on here between that last tinsel section and the head and that's i mean that's more for me than anything else i just think it looks better all right next thing 
I'm going to bring my thread up from the back side and around the post here. I'm doing this slow so you can see it, so it rests on the near side. This is going to help us when it comes to tie these hackles off. It's going to make it real easy. I'm going to use a hackle plier today. Uh, you don't have to. I'd use a different one maybe if it was just one hackle. But since there's two and I really want to keep them together and have nice tight wraps, I'm going to utilize a hackle plier. Now take your time. You don't have to do tons and tons and tons of wraps, but this is always the issue here. Wrapping the hackle, keeping your hackles together. It's never going to be perfect, perfect. Now I'm holding the post with my thumb. I don't need to. That's just habit. Work those down right to the hook shank. Great. I think we only did, I don't know, four wraps there. Take that thread that's already on the near side, your side. I'm going to actually wrap around the post on top of the hackle. Then underneath, switch hands. Underneath that hackle. And then again on top of it, just three wraps to secure it to the post. Now you can undo your hackle pliers. You can reach in gingerly and trim off those feathers. Okay. You're going to have a few trap fibers. That's just how this works. You know, if you tie a few hundred dozen, maybe you won't, but for our purposes, you're going to have some. That's okay. Thumb, index finger, lift your hackle, come right to the eye, two wraps, then you can grab your whip finisher, hold that out of the way, two, three, four, five turn or so whip finish, snip your thread, and at this point, you can play clean up with your hackle. If you've got a few errant fibers, you know, the funny thing is I think it'd be just as fishy with a few loose fibers, you know. Great. Now it comes time to trim the post, which can be a little scary. I get that. But what we're shooting for, you know, is kind of, I like kind of a short stubby post. If you want a higher viz fly, cut a taller post, but you know, kind of go again with that gap measurement for total length. And that is the Parachute Patriot. All right, that's it for the Patriot, everyone. I really hope you get a chance to tie some of these up and try them out on your local brook trout stream. If you get a chance, leave us some comments down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this tutorial, and especially if you get a chance to tie some of these and try them out. If any of this information was helpful, think about hitting that thumbs up button. It's a big help to us. If you'd like to support this channel, Think about buying some materials or anything else you need for fly fishing at thenorthernangler.com or at the very least, try and support your local fly shop. I know they'll appreciate it. That's it for me today. I hope to see you all very soon in the shop or out on the water.